Hello, I'm here today with Chris Meadows, Investor Relations Manager at IQE PLC. Hello, Chris. Hello. Can you explain to me, most chips are made from silicon, but IQE provide a more advanced compound semiconductor material. Why is silicon so common and what do you think the advantages are to this advanced semiconductor? Well, silicon is uh, the original um, semiconductor material. Uh, it dates back about 50 years and uh, it revolutionized the electronics world. Um, most people are familiar with silicon chips and uh, computers and so on uh, are all enabled by that technology. Uh, but there are limitations to silicon in what it can do. Uh, and so there's an advanced generation of materials which has been around for a few years, uh, but only with the advent of uh, mobile telephones and in particular smartphones uh, that need very high data rates and so on, uh, have they needed the advanced performance uh, that comes about from these compound semiconductor materials. And that's performance in terms of speed uh, and power consumption. And of course, for today's handheld devices and uh, a lot of new technologies, uh, performance is the key. You have many potential end market opportunities. What would you say is the greatest opportunity for you in the next two to five years? And how are you going to drive the success of those opportunities? Well, the, the, the real advantages of these compound semiconductors is, is this performance advantage over silicon. Um, and they're not really competing. They're more complementary technologies. Uh, so where silicon has revolutionized the computing world, compound semiconductors uh, can do that wherever high data speeds are needed, um, where energy efficiency is needed, and so on. Uh, and so these lend themselves to applications uh, not just in the wireless world, uh, but also in things like solar energy, um, in low energy consumption devices, um, and, and also in areas such as uh, photonics or optoelectronics, uh, anything that needs uh, an optical input or an optical output, uh, such as optical fiber communications. Um, they need the additional properties that, that are offered by compound semiconductor materials. So we see those areas as, as being the high growth areas, um, and in particular, uh, things like something called CP. PV, which is uh, concentrated photovoltaics, which is a posh word for advanced uh, solar energy. Um, this is uh, utility scale energy, such as solar farms uh, that would be found um, in, in the first instance in uh, areas of high uh, levels of sunlight. So certainly around the tropical zones, uh, South America, um, uh, parts of California, China, India, Africa, mm. and so on. Um, and, and these are multiple megawatt or even gigawatt uh, applications uh, that can be achieved using compound semiconductors conductors um, that are, are highly efficient and, and several times the efficiency uh, that can be achieved with silicon uh, materials. IQE has played an active role in consolidating the industry, most recently buying the wafer manufacturing operations of both a key competitor, Copin, and a customer, RFMD. What have been the benefits of focusing on an acquisition strategy rather than purely focusing on just organic growth? Well, IQE had built up uh, a very strong reputation in, in uh, the world of wireless in supplying these enabling technologies for uh, smartphones and, uh, and, and base stations. Uh, but we were slightly vulnerable to swings uh, further downstream in the marketplace. Uh, and so although we had a very strong foothold in the market, um, if our customers lost their uh, market share, um, then uh, whoever they lost it to um, would, would gain and we would completely lose that part of the market. Uh, so by acquiring uh, RFMD and then latterly Copin, um, that gave us a much stronger market position and effectively gave us uh, access to the whole of the wireless market so that wherever the market swings in our customer base, we um, maintained our share, so, so strengthened our position in wireless. So there's currently a debate in the industry as to whether silicon might replace these semiconductor materials for use in handsets, which is your greatest market. What are your views on this? Well, silicon has been around for many years, certainly at least the last 50 years. Uh, and during that time, it's uh, gradually improved um, incrementally so that uh, it's been able to meet a lot of the demands that we place on it for computing and to some extent for radio frequency, which is used in wireless handsets. Um, but compared to compound semiconductors, which can switch up to hundreds of times faster than silicon, uh, the, the steps are incremental. And it's likely that in the future, the high data rates that we expect in broadband, mobile, and so on, uh, will be such that they can only be achieved using compound semiconductor materials. But it's quite reasonable that on the way there, we'll see a little bit of market share going to silicon, a little bit going to gallium arsenide, but we believe it's still a very strong market for these compound semiconductor materials. 
And given that, do you expect that wireless is going to remain your key growth area over the next few years? Without a doubt, wireless will be a key area for us. Um, whether it's our largest growth area uh, remains to be seen. Uh, we think there are ex exciting opportunities in, in the other areas, such as uh, photonics, and in particular in this area of solar energy, the, um, the multiple megawatt uh, installations, uh, because this CPV technology that uh, uh, relies on compound semiconductors uh, has a huge market potential. And so we believe there are growth uh, opportunities in a lot of other areas that compound semiconductors lend themselves to um, where silicon uh, can't really make an impact. Um, and so uh, whilst wireless will remain strong, uh, we believe that the photonics opportunities, and in particular uh, CPV, solar energy, um, and power control as we move to much more efficient use of energy, um, the, these technologies will rely more heavily on compound semiconductor materials. This is clearly a growth area. Have you got any messages for any potential investors? Well, I think the key thing is that compound semiconductors are really set to revolutionize the world of power efficiency, power generation, um, and data communications, both in optical terms and uh, for wireless communications, uh, in the way that silicon did 50 odd years ago uh, for the electronics and computing industries. So I think really we're at an inflection point, um, and uh, it's almost a perfect storm coming together of uh, our thirst for high-speed data and for power efficiency uh, that can really not be equaled other than by using uh, compound semiconductors. Chris, thank you very much for joining us today. And thank if you, you like any more information, please do visit the Edison website.